we have finished chapter 10, so we're starting the last chapter, chapter 11, and we're going to be solving quadratics in the initial part of the chapter. So remember, a quadratic is in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. Remember, whatever your highest exponent is, that's how many solutions you're going to have. Because a quadratic is x squared, you're always going to have two solutions. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do today is the square root property. And I've got it down here on this little board. The square root property says that if a squared is equal to b, then you're going to take the square root of both sides, then a is equal to plus or minus the square root of b. That's how you get your two solutions. You have the plus or the positive solution and the minus or the negative solution. Okay, so um, I'll put this back up here at the end of this little lesson that we're going to do. This is just, we're only going to do the first part of 11.1 right now. Like I said, it's the square root property. So let's go through and work some problems. If we have x squared is equal to 45, x squared is equal to 45. So this is a quadratic. This is, we're going to do the square root property. Remember, we're going to get two answers. To undo the square, we're going to take the square root. We take the square root of the left side. We have to take the square root of the right side. So x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 45. Just to kind of shorten what we're doing, remember 45 it has a perfect square in it. 45 is 9 times 5. Okay, so the square root of 9 is 3. So this is plus or minus 3 times the square root of 5. So those are your two solutions to that original problem. Okay, the next problem that we're going to do, I'm going to erase this so I can just keep writing where it's a little bit easier to write and where it's probably a little bit easier for you to read it. So we have 5x squared is equal to 55. Okay, so we still want to solve for x, so we want to get the x squared by itself. We're going to divide both sides by 5. We have x squared is equal to 11. Okay, so now using the square root property, the square root undoes the square. We're going to take the square root of both sides. So x is equal to, you have to consider both the positive and the negative root. So x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 11. Okay, so now we're going to do a problem that has a binomial in that is being squared. So if we had the quantity x plus 3 squared, so x plus 3 quantity squared is equal to 25. Okay, this looks more complex. It's really not. If this is squared, remember two things. You're going to have two solutions plus a square root undoes the square. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. So x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus 5. So now to get the x all by itself, we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. So x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus 5. Okay, but you guys, you can't leave your answer like this. This is arithmetic that you have to finish out. You have negative 3 plus 5, and you have negative 3 minus 5. So negative 3 plus 5 is 2, and negative 3 minus 5 is a negative 8. So both of those are your solutions. Remember, you always have to have two solutions if you're solving a quadratic. Okay, let's do another one like that. We have the quantity x plus 2 squared is equal to 18. Okay, Doug, so now we're going to take the square root of both sides because the square root undoes the square. And so we're left with what's inside. x plus 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of. Okay, remember 18 is 9 times 2. Okay, so this is x plus 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 9 is 3 times the square root of 2. So to get that x by itself, we're going to subtract 2 from both sides. So x is equal to 
This is how you're gonna write it. You're gonna write your negative two first and then your plus or minus three times the square root of two. If you have a radical, the term with your radical comes last. It's gonna be your um, rational number part and then your irrational number part. Okay, that's just how we always do it. It's just standard notation. Okie doke. So that's the last problem I'm gonna work like this. I wanna tell you a couple of things before we close the first part of 11.1 .1 out. Okay, before we, before you view the next section, what I want you to do is this. I have sent you a worksheet for completing perfect square trinomials. Please make sure you complete that worksheet before you look at 11.1b. Also, make sure that you can factor these three trinomials quickly, quickly, quickly. Okie doke, I will try to, um, when I upload stuff like this, I'll also try to send you a link to a Khan Academy lecture that is similar. Okie doke, thank you.